Coming up on this edition of the Desert Vision, we'll meet an NCO who achieved a milestone in education and some local ping pong stars. We'll also get a look at some very rare summer training and find out what's new in military equal opportunity. Welcome to the Desert Vision, presented by U.S. Army Central. I'm Staff Sergeant Bob Yarbrough. And I'm Specialist Max Huth. Juggling your work-life balance isn't always easy, especially while you're deployed. But getting ahead in your education is possible no matter where you are in the world. I sat down with Sergeant First Class Jonathan Patterson, and we talked about his recent achievement in the classroom. My course of study was uh, uh, Master's in Business Administration, uh, MBA, with a concentration in Finance and in Accounting. In total, it took about 18 months. I started it off in uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, when I was uh, deployed there to Cuba. And then I finished it up um, as I came over here and, and, and then the last time. I miss football games, I miss birthdays, I miss family outings. I miss the opportunity to promote faster to Master Sergeant, um, just because I, I focused on the civilian education. Tons of sacrifices as, as, as far as uh, personal sacrifices, uh, professional sacrifices that, that I've made, but overall, I would say it was worth it. One reason is, you know, I want to set an example for my kids. Number two, I love the challenge. I love the challenge of, of, of challenging myself to see if I can continue to grow in my professional, uh, mental, and uh, spiritual careers. You challenge yourself to want to complete something. It's almost as if you're preparing yourself for a board or you're preparing yourself for best warrior competition. Um, you lay it out and you just set goals on each and every time. Take it uh, uh, one bite at a time. Is it ever really too late to get an education? I certainly don't think so. Well, while we're fortunate enough to have opportunities to get ahead in life while we're here, sometimes it's just important to take it easy. Camp Arif John MWR hosted a ping pong tournament and the competition was pretty intense. Specialist Elizabeth Hackbarth brings us the story. I come here every day. There's a group of about six or seven of us that are always playing table tennis. I actually just learned uh, how to play like three months ago. And today we are having a ping pong tournament at NWR. Apparently there's some fierce competition going on in there right now. So uh, uh, we're here to uh, uh, play, meet other people, create connections, and the first three places get some prizes. The COVID environment has hindered us on doing so many things, you know. The soldiers need an outlet to get some of their energy out. So events like these, what they do is they, they trigger happiness. It's, it's good for mental health, good stress reliever. Keeps everyone uh, happy and smiling on their faces. Man, I think I'd need a tennis racket to beat some of those people. <laughs> we'll have more from U.S. Army Central right after this. Welcome back everyone, we're here for the sixth and final exercise of the Army Combat Fitness Test, the Two Mile Run. This event tests your cardiovascular endurance. The Two Mile Run measures a service member's aerobic endurance, and part of a way to help us train for that is to incorporate Army cadences which will help us develop our pace control and also our breathing control. So some real life applications for the two mile run are conducting dismounted movements. For example, patrols, infiltrations, and ruck marches. So some preparatory exercises that we can do to help us prepare for the two mile run are 3060s, fartlek runs, and release runs. So the 3060s are conducted at a 30 second and 60 second time interval 
And at that 30 second time interval, we're gonna be running at a 60 to 75% maximum pace. And then during the 60 second interval, we're gonna slow it down for a walk. All right, everyone, the fartlek run is a distance run where we're running at one minute and three minute intervals. And during that one minute interval, we're running at about a 75% pace. In that three minute interval, we're backing it down to a slow jog. And we're doing these fartlek runs at a distance greater than two miles. So the release run is just a simple run at a distance chosen by that runner. So whether you're going two miles, three miles, or five miles, it's just getting out, practicing our foot strike, practicing our pace control, and practicing that breathing control. All right, Special Sack Barth, are you ready? And remember to hydrate, eat green, conduct preparatory and recovery exercises, and let's get after it, because getting after it is what we do. <laughs> Run faster! Cadets all across the U.S. spend part of their summer in training to become officers in the active Army, Reserve, or National Guard. This is usually done by going to drill weekends or annual training alongside your future soldiers and peers, or by having a unit come to your school and train with you on basic soldier skills. These cadets got an interesting offer this year and came to Kuwait with the Army Corps of Engineers. Specialist Juan Carlos Izquierdo has more. It's a cadet engineering internship program and basically come out here to experience more of what the Corps does within integrated into the Army and see their efforts in Kuwait and the rest of the Middle East. Touring the sites just gives us good exposure to uh, what actually takes place on the sites that uh, you wouldn't be able to just see from the office and you could get to see the things firsthand. The great thing about seeing it at the early stages, you see how everything is, you know, basically you're going from dirt to ground to, to foundations and, and working your way up. On the other side, they're going to see where it's almost completed and they'll see the finished product and they'll be able to appreciate the amount of work that goes into getting that finished product when they see the early stage and then compare it to what they'll see later today with the, the final stages. Just a really cool experience being able to be on an active duty military base as a cadet because I know a lot of other cadets don't get to experience that so I can take that knowledge and take it back to my battalion back at my home school and help lead and better educate other cadets and help them advocate for them to apply for internship opportunities like this and just advertise it because it's a good experience. That's an experience I'm sure they'll never forget. The culture and climate here alone are enough to make Kuwait stay with me for life. Military Equal Opportunity, or MEO, is a program that is constantly evolving to help the Army's culture adapt to the ever-changing world. Staff Sergeant True Tao saw firsthand what the MEO Leaders Course looks like. The Equal Opportunity Leader course is a course for students who are going to serve as Equal Opportunity Leaders at the company and battalion level. This is an additional duty for soldiers who are of the rank of Sergeant through Captain and they are there to be the eyes and ears of the commander, advise the commander on the climate of the organization, and assist soldiers who may have issues with Equal Opportunity Matters. This training, I think, is essential to ensure that our units are prepared for equal opportunity matters. Uh, the impetus of this program is on the commanders, but as we know, commanders of the organization are busy with many responsibilities. So to have an equal opportunity leader in their organization allows them to be mindful of these issues and to have somebody really focused on that. So I think it's very integral for all of our units to have these um, equal opportunity leaders as part of it. Asking questions to get to the bottom of things you've got to ask those how, what, where, when questions. Some of those practical exercises, uh, they really hit close to home. They were very well articulated in a way to get you thinking in different perspectives. It allowed you to get the raw emotions, you know, from any soldier who decided to come forth with their own stories and personal experiences. It's important to have these conversations, to be able to open up and have that open form of communication so that way you are understanding, you know, your battle buddy that's right next to you. Because we have to be accepting to everyone and their beliefs and their views.
I think it's really important because sometimes we all come from different backgrounds. You only know what you know and how you're raised. And so once you get here, you're exposed to different folks and different types of education. Your knowledge is expanded and it just helps you go through life and your career a little bit easier. I think just being an African-American woman, I'm, I was already born at a disadvantage and so I had a fight to get to where I am and I just want to make sure those who come after me don't have to fight as hard because I can be the voice and agent of change for them. I hope if nothing else people can be passionate about the Equal Opportunity Program and knowing that regardless of what our skin color is, what our sex is, what our religious background is, how long we've been in the military or how new we are to the organization, we all are people of value and we have something to bring to this great military and continue this excellent tradition. Well, that'll do it for the Desert Vision. Thanks for checking in. For more stories, check our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash U.S. Army Central. For U.S. Army Central, I'm Staff Sergeant Bob Yarborough. And I'm Specialist Max Youth. Patton's own. Always forward.